Well, after 30 years on the job running the National Rifle Association, today is Wayne LaPierre's last day. During his 33 years running the National Rifle Association, one million Americans have died from gunshots. The number one killer of children, not car accidents, not cancer, thanks to Wayne LaPain LaPierre, the number one killer of children in America, guns. And today, Wayne LaPierre retires from the National Rifle Association. I hope they give him a gold watch to choke on. This is the mop-up for January 31st, 2024. I'm David Feldman in New York. Thank you for finding me. Please like this episode so I remain in your feed. This is an audio podcast, so download this wherever you get your audio. The head of the National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre, is terrified of guns doesn't like them, doesn't want to be around guns. Wayne LaPierre, who ran the NRA for 33 years, lives in abject terror of getting shot, which is why he says he illegally took money from the National Rifle Association to pay for beefed-up security around his Dallas mansion, as well as hiring private jets and private yachts, in order to escape our country whenever a really nasty school shooting made him fearful that someone would hold him responsible just because he's the single loudest voice in America against an assault weapons ban. He was terrified of getting assassinated He still is terrified of getting assassinated. And while Wayne LaPierre told everyone the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, he knew he was no good with a gun. No. As I have reported countless times on this program throughout the years, video surfaced two years ago, of Wayne LaPierre on a safari, unable to shoot an endangered African bush elephant who was already on the ground dying from somebody else's gunshot wound. Oh, did I mention Wayne LaPierre is Satan? He goes hunting for endangered elephants. And despite firing four rounds at this dying elephant, Wayne LaPierre missed each time. It's on videotape. You could hear his guide laughing at him. His wife, Susan LaPierre, had to finish the endangered African bush elephant off herself, much to Wayne's humiliation. But something tells me Susan LaPierre, married to Wayne LaPierre, is quite accustomed to finishing off a lot of activities all by herself, if you know what I mean. And if you don't know what I mean, Susan and Wayne LaPierre have no children. I'm guessing Wayne is either firing blanks or there's no lead in his chamber. Now, I'm not saying Wayne LaPierre, the head of the National Rifle Association, is impotent. A lot of men don't have children. And it's not like a guy who dedicated his entire adult life to promoting the right to own a gun would ever be overcompensating for anything. So like I said, I have no idea if the head of the National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre, is impotent. It wouldn't surprise me, especially since the original slogan was from my cold, dead penis. Anyway, I have no idea if Wayne LaPierre is impotent. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. 
Again, I have no idea. I mean, a lot of men never father a child. But you would think the guy who heads the National Rifle Association would go out of his way to appear masculine by fathering several idiot children. I mean, that's kind of what the NRA is all about. Guns and family. Guns and your stupid family. He has guns, sort of. He doesn't really like them. And he has no family. Just his beard. I'm sorry, his wife, Susan. And, you know, she looks like it's a loving relationship. She looks like she's getting all her needs satisfied, Susan LaPierre. So I'm sure Wayne LaPierre, the head of the National Rifle Association, well, today's his last job, but the last day on the job. But I'm sure Wayne LaPierre, the outgoing head of the National Rifle Association, I'm pretty sure he's, he's not impotent. But, if I were to write a screenplay about the world's most impotent man, I would definitely name him LaPierre. LaPierre. What do you think? We have a, a virtual live studio audience. We have a poll with the YouTube chat room, and I'll give you the results at the end of this episode. Do you think Wayne LaPierre is impotent? Yes. No, Castrato. I mean, there's no way to tell. It's just conjecture. So that's why I'm asking my audience in this poll, and I'll have the results at the end of today's episode. Do you think Wayne LaPierre is impotent? Yes, no, or Castrato? Susan LaPierre, it turns out, is a great shot. And there's video of Susan LaPierre shooting another endangered elephant, then slicing off his tail and shouting at the top of her lungs in Botswana, victory. What a woman. What a woman. Wait, it gets better. Susan LaPierre, after killing the endangered elephant in Botswana, had his feet illegally flown back to the United States so she could have them turned into chairs inside the couple's Dallas mansion. This is for real. These are the chairs. This is a photograph from the New Yorker magazine. Let me go full screen here so you can take a look. These are actual chairs, stools. Uh, this is from the New Yorker magazine three years ago. Mike Spies wrote about this in July of 2021. You can Google the New Yorker magazine to verify this. These are two chairs made from the endangered elephant Susan LaPierre murdered in Bots Botswana. The other feet, and you know, I have a pretty dark sense of humor, but not when it comes to endangered elephants. So this is true. According to Mike Spies in The New Yorker, the other feet from the endangered elephant that Susan LaPierre killed were turned into an umbrella stand and a trash can. A trash can. This is all from the July 29th, 2021 edition of The New Yorker. It was a piece written by Mike Spies. That's the handiwork of of Susan LaPierre, the wife of Wayne LaPierre. Look at those chairs, huh? Talk about taste and refinement. It's almost as though the Dean of Interior Decorators, Billy Baldwin, never left us. Welcome to my home. Pull up a foot. Can I fix you a drink, perhaps a splash of brandy? Turning an endangered elephant's foot into a trash can. I'll tell you one thing about Susan LaPierre. This woman sure goes out of her way to make herself lovable. What a lovable woman. It's a tragedy that they didn't have children. That's 
that's my biggest regret is that Susan and Wayne LaPierre never had children. So all of this is coming to light this week as NRA Chief Wayne LaPierre took the stand for a third day on Tuesday. Big civil fraud trial, been covering it since it started two weeks ago. And here's the thing I've noticed. Since this show first started, I've been going after Wayne LaPierre. And whenever I went after Wayne LaPierre, there was always pushback from gun rights activists. But since this trial started, not a peep. Nobody's complaining that I'm going after Wayne LaPierre. Because once New York State Attorney General Letitia James got Wayne LaPierre on the stand, she revealed him to be the tiny little effete and frightened man he really is. The testimony is breathtaking and gratifying. It's very satisfying to hear Wayne LaPierre admit not just his wrongdoings, but that he is not a man. He is, by every standard through which gun rights activists define masculinity, anything but a man. Now, I think LaPierre's testimony might serve as some foreshadowing for what we can expect during Trump's four criminal trials. Now, I doubt we'll see Donald Trump take the stand. He doesn't have the courage to do that. But when we start hearing from people like Mark Meadows, his White House chief of staff, we're going to see a different Donald Trump, a frightened Donald Trump. LaPierre, throughout his entire career, had much the same bravado as Donald Trump, calling ATF agents jackbooted thugs. Remember Wayne LaPierre calling the FBI Nazis and attacking liberals and gun control advocates? But a funny thing happened once New York State Attorney General Letitia James began this trial. He turned into a broken man. Deservedly so. You know, a massive civil trial will do that to a guy. Unless you're Donald Trump. Two civil suits. One for fraud. One for rape. Made him even worse. But, you know, a criminal trial for, they're going to be scarier. And we know he's going to get convicted in at least one of those four criminal trials. And unless he wins in November, how could anyone, after the unrelenting disrespect he showed for our criminal justice system, the physical intimidation he fosters, how could anyone say Donald Trump doesn't deserve years in prison? If he doesn't win, who will come to his defense? Back to the NRA. During yesterday's testimony, LaPierre, who may or may not be impotent, there's no way to tell, he said he hated going on safari. And he only went on that safari to get videotaped. It was a marketing ploy, he said, to make him look like an outdoorsman, which he testified, I most certainly am not. Head of the NRA said, hate safaris, hate guns, not an outdoorsman. LaPierre testified, quote, about why he went on the safari to shoot the elephant. Quote, I needed to build a rep and be seen as a hunter. I needed to develop the street cred if I was going to do the job, unquote. Yeah, street cred. You know what gives a man street cred? $50,000 shopping sprees for suits on Rodeo Drive. That's the only street you have cred on, Rodeo Drive. What a man 
Wayne LaPierre. He's all man. He is. It's, it's like Teddy Roosevelt fisted Ernest Hemingway and Wayne LaPierre came leaking out. According to NRA Watch, which has been doing a great job covering this trial extensively, is anybody covering this trial? I, it's, to me, it's like the most important trial of the decade. Uh, according to NRA Watch, between 2018 and 2022, the NRA spent more than $100 million on legal fees from one law firm alone. One law firm alone, $100 million in four years. John Frazier, the general counsel for the National Rifle Association, is also a defendant in New York State Attorney General Letitia James' civil fraud trial against the NRA, and John Frazier took the stand on Tuesday as well. The New York State Attorney General presented John Frazier, the NRA's general counsel, with regulatory filings for this nonprofit, tax exempt, charitable organization called the NRA. And the regulatory filings showed that over a four year period, between 2018 and 2022, the National Rifle Association paid a single law firm $100 million to help it deal with, among other things, the NRA's failed attempt to declare bankruptcy in the state of New York and reincorporate in gun-friendly Texas. When Letitia James started investigating, the NRA said, we got to hightail it out of New York. They were incorporated in the late 19th century in New York State, and they wanted to declare bankruptcy and then reincorporate in Ken Paxton's Texas. But that wasn't going to that wasn't going to happen. But they paid this law firm $100 million to help them declare bankruptcy. For $100 million, this law firm helps you go bankrupt by bankrupting you. $100 million to help the NRA go bankrupt. And they couldn't even do that. The judge said, no, you're solvent. Not going to happen. The defendant in the New York State civil fraud trial, John Frazier, the general counsel for the NRA, looks like a very happy man. He testified that, yes, I was the general counsel, the top attorney for the National Rifle Association, but I had no idea that we were paying this law firm $100 million. He testified, quote, I never added it up. I never added it up. He said the NRA didn't conduct any independent audits of its legal bills. This period, this four-year period where they paid this law firm $100 million, they were uh, at the time cutting back on all its member services, no more training. They weren't training anybody on how to use a firearm because they had to pay their legal bills. There has been a 40% decline in revenue during the past six years. But it never occurred to this legal genius, John Frazier, to maybe take a look at the legal fees, having trouble paying your bills, a little personal responsibility. I know the NRA is big on personal responsibility. You might want to check to see why $100 million went out of your checking account. The NRA, by the way, also donated $30 million to Donald Trump's campaign back in 2016. More than any organization in America, just so you know what kind of patriots we're dealing with. And I talked about this on the show uh, two mornings ago, about how investigations f showed that a lot of people think the NRA was a straw donor for Vladimir Putin. A lot of people think the NRA was a Russian asset funneling money to 
Donald Trump's campaign in 2016. The takeaway from LaPierre's testimony, three days of testimony, last Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, the takeaway from all of this, and I'm being serious, is that nobody feared guns more than the head of the National Rifle Association. Wayne LaPierre lived the life of a hermit, traveling in private limos, private planes. He lived in a bubble of security for fear that someone would take a shot at him. He admitted in his testimony to misusing the organization's funds on luxury trips, clothing, and other lavish personal expenses. He admitted he violated the law and that his actions were indeed a disservice to the National Rifle Association and its members. And I say, shame on you, Wayne LaPierre. How many more members of Congress could have been purchased with that trip you took to Lake Como? How many members of Congress could you have purchased with that $15,000 Zegna suit that you made the NRA pay for? You know, and I'm being serious, you could buy an entire congressman. This is the truth. You can buy an entire congressman for half of what Wayne LaPierre spent on floral arrangements for his 20th wedding anniversary. LaPierre, along with two, and that's the truth. These, you know, these congressmen come cheap. LaPierre, along with two other organization executives, is accused of stealing $45 million from the National Rifle Association. This is the big trial in New York State, civil court. And right before it started, they picked the jury and LaPierre announced his retirement. And today is the last day Wayne LaPierre will head what he turned into a, a propaganda arm for the, the arms manufacturers. That's all the NRA really is. It's just a trade association for people, gun, ma gun manufacturers, people who sell assault weapons. NRA Watch says during testimony, LaPierre admitted he made the NRA pay for helicopter rides so he and several other NRA executives could attend a NASCAR rally at Texas Motor Speedway because he didn't think they should have to sit in traffic. During his testimony, LaPierre said he ignored laws regarding nonprofit tax exempt charitable organizations. He ignored all those laws by charging all these expenses without prior approval. And he admitted under oath that no, no, none of those expenses would have ever been sanctioned. He admitted it. During his testimony, LaPierre, who may or may not be impotent, there's really no way for us to know. It wouldn't surprise me. And we have a poll going on in our chat room. The question is, is Wayne LaPierre impotent? Yes, no, or castrato? There's no way, but I'd like to know what people are saying. During his testimony, LaPierre, who again, may or may not be impotent, uh, admitted to racking up $274,000 in charges from one Beverly Hills clothing boutique alone. Zegna, like Zegna. I should mention, there's also no way to tell if Wayne LaPierre is a homosexual. And what would it matter other than a lot? Other than the fact that for the head of the hyper-masculine National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre sure has some awfully effeminate tastes in clothing, travel, and gifts for himself. But again, who knows? There's absolutely...
absolutely no way to tell if Wayne LaPierre is impotent or gay. I have no idea. But it wouldn't surprise me. His wife, <coughs> Susan, often charged the NRA $10,000 per session, per session, $10,000 per session for a hair and makeup stylist. How much hair and makeup does this crone need? According to testimony, the NRA spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on Susan LaPierre's makeup alone. My friend at Sephora says they call her a code blue. She walks into Sephora and they go, we got a code blue on our hands. Which begs the question, could Susan LaPierre possibly be uglier on the outside than she is on the inside? Is such a thing possible? Could Susan LaPierre be uglier on the outside than she is on the inside? I mean, this woman hunts rare elephants. That's a lot of ugliness inside of this woman. And remember the elephant feet chairs? That's a lot of ugliness inside of one woman to take an elephant foot, an endangered elephant foot, and turn it into a trash can? I mean, you are really ugly on the inside, you crone. But does her ugliness on the inside match this crone's face? Well, it's hard to say since the NRA spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on makeup to cover this crone's face. So we will never know if this crone is as ugly on the outside as she is on the inside. NRA Watch reports that Susan LaPierre was president of the nonprofit Youth for Tomorrow. Ah, she couldn't have kids. So she formed a nonprofit called Youth for Tomorrow. Wayne LaPierre confessed under oath this week that he ordered the National Rifle Association to donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to her organization without permission from the National Rifle Association board. It's against the law. Wayne LaPierre admitted that Susan LaPierre's charity then hired an outside contractor to do work for her nonprofit, which was then billed to her husband's nonprofit, the NRA. Right? The, isn't that sweet? The couple has matching elephant foot chairs and matching nonprofit tax exempt charitable organizations to steal from. You know, the NRA and Susan LaPierre's Youth for Tomorrow may be nonprofit, but the couple running those two charities sure are not. The NRA is a nonprofit charitable organization that doesn't pay taxes. It has tax exempt status. Every town USA, this was the gun control organization set up by Michael Bloomberg. Every town USA, this is a reliable organization. Every town USA estimates that when you add up the medical expenses, lost wages, lost productivity, the costs for police, coroners, gun violence in America costs a total 
of $557 billion a year. That's a 2.6% slice out of our GDP. 2.6% out of the American GDP is paying for gun violence. Now, I know there are a lot of people who love their guns, but this is from Bloomberg. Guns cost America $557 billion a year. Get out your calculator because, you know, the, the hospital last year charged my insurance company 50 grand for my kidney stones. Wait, I have pictures, okay? 50 grand was billed to my insurer to fish out this guy, little Toby. And his dad, Big Toby, that's Big Toby, that cost 50 grand to get rid of Big Toby and Little Toby, my kidney stones. So if it costs 50 grand, right, to remove my kidney stones, I can only imagine what they charge for bullets. 50,000 Americans die from gunshots, half of them self inflicted. And 70,000 survive gunshots every year. So let's say 120,000 Americans are shot each year. Get out your calculator. I'm going to be conservative and say that's $100,000 each in medical expenses. Just in medical expenses alone, that's $100,000. If my kidney stones were $50,000... Gunshots, assuming there are no complications, I'm going to say $100,000 per gunshot victim each year. Multiply that times 120,000 Americans who either get shot to death, shoot themselves, or get shot. Uh, and then you tack on the police, the ambulance, the uh, Outpatient treatment, you know, Steve Scalise, the majority leader, is still going for treatment for the gunshot wounds he survived. Uh, and then if you die, funerals. Of course, there are lawyers and prosecutors and public defenders. That easily tops out what, $200,000 per gunshot victim? And that's just the first degree of relationship to a gunshot victim. Once you tack on lost wages, lost productivity, being unable to work because you're in recovery, families losing their primary breadwinner and relying on social services, the government having to pony up money, insurance companies having to pony up money. It is not an overstatement when every town USA says gun violence in America sucks out 2.6% of our GDP every year. Get your calculator. Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, multi-billionaire. Remember him? Not a fan of him, but he's right on gun control. He says guns cost America $557 billion a year. That is 2.6% of our GDP. Maybe the NRA which caused all this, should start paying taxes. You know, the NRA, like I said, was the biggest donor to Donald Trump. In 2016, they gave him $30 million. Pierre, since he took over, has made it a point to align this organization with far-right ra racist extremists who want to overthrow the government of the United States. Wayne LaPierre invited Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, to speak at one NRA event recently. 
The Oath Keepers were also involved in several other NRA events spread out across America over the years. The Oath Keepers, remember them? Their leader, Stuart Rhodes, who spoke at an NRA event recently, is unavailable for any more speaking engagements because he's now serving a 21-year seditious conspiracy sentence for the role he played on January 6. LaPierre, during his testimony, admitted that he made the NRA pay for family vacations that often cost the gun rights organization $38,000 a pop. And then there was the air travel, $55,000 for chartered airfare. For his niece, he would fly his niece from Nebraska to the Bahamas on the NRA's dime, $58,000. When asked by his own attorney if charging millions and millions of dollars to the NRA for these trips, was it wrong? And on the stand, under oath, a sheepish and frightened, broken Wayne LaPierre said yes, it was wrong. Rarely do you get these, as Donald Trump would say, Perry Mason moments. This is the Perry Mason moment. I mean, I read the testimony, I'm salivating. It's everything I want. The man is broken and humiliated and exposed. I don't know why this story isn't being covered the way it should be. Lawyers for LaPierre are also representing the NRA. The NRA is also on trial. Wayne LaPierre and two other executives are on trial for stealing $45 million, but the NRA is also on trial. And the lawyers for the NRA are trying to convince the jury that while LaPierre is guilty of gross financial mismanagement, he repaid all the money he stole, and therefore the NRA should not be held accountable, even though LaPierre was the organization up until today. He ran the organization as his personal fiefdom for 33 years. LaPierre, under oath, said he paid the NRA back the $300,000 he owed it plus interest. Eh, not good. See, Letitia James, the New York State Attorney General, says, along with two other executives, La Pierre actually owes the NRA $45 million, and she's trying to get that $45 million back for the NRA. The New York State Attorney General... Letitia James says LaPierre used Ackerman McQueen, their public relations firm. He used Ackerman McQueen as what is called a pass-through corporation. The way it works is LaPierre authorized more than $100 million to be paid to Ackerman McQueen. This is the not the law firm. That's a separate $100 million. I think Ackerman McQueen it was like $120, $140 million they ended up getting. And so the NRA paid this pass-through corporation, let's say $120 million for so-called public relations services. They started NRA TV, which nobody watched. Dana Loesch was on it. And the purpose of NRA TV, Ackerman McQueen set it up so they could pad expenses, charge the NRA, and Wayne was sending them money. And in return, they gave LaPierre an American Express card to make purchases for whatever he wanted. It's a kickback. It's called a kickback. On the stand... Wayne LaPierre admitted this week to funneling cash in and out of this pass-through corporation, Ackerman McQueen, but he said he did so for reasons of, quote-unquote, 
confidentiality. He said, I did it out of confidentiality. What, what does that mean? It means I'm going to steal money from the donors, so I'd like to do it confidentially. I don't want anyone to find out that I'm going to steal $45 million from the Hayseeds who donate to the National Rifle Association. LaPierre testified, this is the head of the National Rifle Association, testified that he lived in a constant state of terror of being shot. (laughs) The head of the NRA was terrified of being shot. Guns didn't make him feel safe. He had all the guns in the world. Didn't make him feel safe. So the NRA had to buy him a mansion in a Dallas-gated community. They helped with the landscaping. They built walls around his gated. He he bought a house in a gated community. The gates weren't secure enough, so they had to build walls. And for some reason, they paid $800 a year for his mosquito abatement. (laughs) Well, yeah, because mosquitoes are liberal Marxists who want to take away our guns, and they'll stop at nothing. So, yeah, I'm sure he was terrified of mosquitoes, Judging by his marksmanship in Botswana, he couldn't harm a fly. So he had to have the NRA pay $800 a year for mosquito abatement. That's where your money went, my gun rights activists, my 2A people. That's where all your money went. And then he said, but it's not my fault, because it never is. Never is. The NRA, the bastion of personal responsibility, well, their leader said, this wasn't my fault. It was Ackerman McQueen, the PR firm. This was all their idea. Uh huh. They told him to do this. They told him he needed all this security wasn't my idea. They told me to buy these suits and vacation in the Bahamas and Lake Como and pl- fly private and fly my niece to the Bahamas. wasn't my fault. They told me to do it. A frightened Wayne LaPierre testified that he's being stalked. Wayne LaPierre is being stalked. The guy who doesn't want to get rid of the gun, the boyfriend loophole, he's being stalked. Poor baby. The guy who fights gun control activists by saying guns will keep you safe, he's terrified of getting shot. He says he's being stalked. And so... Despite all the guns and all the security, he lives his entire life in hiding. But the solution for the rest of us here in America is second grade teachers need to be packing heat. Give everyone a gun. That's the, that's the solution for everybody else. You want your kids to feel safe? You want to feel safe sending your kids to, to kindergarten? Make sure the kindergarten teacher is packing heat because she's probably just as good a shot as Wayne LaPierre is. LaPierre described the terror of being swatted. The poor baby. He got swatted and he asked the jury and the judge for sympathy. This is what he has to live with, getting swatted. Courthouse News Service reports that LaPierre told the jury about the swatting incident. Quote, he said, quote, my wife was saying, don't go out there. Someone's going to kill you. So I walked out there with my hands up and about 15 police officers were there with their guns 
drawn and they ran at me. He added, I was running around like my head had been cut off. That's what he said. I was running around like my head had been cut off. I didn't understand what he meant by that. I was running around on my front lawn like my head had been cut off. And then I realized, oh, yeah, like a chicken. Chicken. Chickens run around with their heads cut off. And that's what Wayne LaPierre is. He's a chicken. And so is anyone who thinks they need a gun to protect themselves. Guns don't make you safe. They make you less safe. This is the only country in the civilized world that lives and dies this way. Today is Wayne LaPierre's last day working for the National Rifle Association. I wish you a retirement of permanent kidney stones with no morphine. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak, not with a gun. Let's check our poll. We have a virtual studio audience or a chat room. Uh, hi, people. I, I don't know if you're, I don't know if Bob is here. Thank you to Bob. And I, this is, I never know how to get there. I'm sorry about this. Please like this episode and share it if you enjoyed any of it. Uh, okay, how do I get into the show? All right, sorry about this. Here we go. All right. Hi. This, this is, is, I, I never, never know, know how, how to. to. Oh, hang on. Okay. Thank you for being here. Bob isn't here. Okay. So thank you to uh, the people who uh, were chatting. Uh, okay. So, you know, there's no way to tell whether or not Wayne LaPierre is impotent. I don't know. So I asked my audience. We have 611 votes. If you're watching us live right now on YouTube, get into the chat room and vote. And the question is, is outgoing NRA head Wayne LaPierre impotent? Your choices are yes, no, castrato. And I'll have the results after I remind you that this is an audio podcast. So please subscribe to this show wherever you get your audio. And please share this. The only reason you're listening is because somebody shared this with you or somebody liked it and I ended up in your feed. So the best way to help me is uh, by liking and sharing this. Please subscribe to the channel and my newsletter. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. With 627 votes, is outgoing NRA head Wayne LaPierre impotent? Yes, no, Castrato. <laughs> 10% said no, he's not impotent. Only 10% think he's not impotent. 27% say he's a castrato. 63% say yes, Wayne LaPierre is impotent. Well, people are saying Wayne LaPierre is impotent. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. That's what I'm hearing. There was a poll that was taken recently where 63% of 637 voters said Wayne LaPierre is impotent. That's what people are saying. Wouldn't surprise me. I'm David Feldman, once again, reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. I am going to be back tomorrow with another show. I give you my word. Thank you for putting up with me. I needed to get this out of my system. <laughs>